video, we saw how to create a trigram model, what, 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 what it entails, and the maximum likelihood estimate for all the trigrams, where the probability of the next word is given the two preceding words, it's just the count of those three words happening together divided by the count of the preceding two words in the corpus. Now the idea is would, uh, now is how to evaluate these language models, right? So we'll use something called perplexity, but to get, get you some intuition, let's assume you have uh, a lot of sentences, M sentences, from sentence 1 to sentence M. One thing we can do is get the probability of each of these sentences, right? If my language model really models English, those sentences, each of these sentences, if those sentences are written in English, should have a high probability, right? So, say for example, we uh, train our model with all of Wikipedia's text, and then we want to test on, say for example, the New York Times, right? Uh, I don't know, we want to test this on one year of the New York Times. So we have a bunch of text and we're testing on another bunch of text, okay? The idea is that if all of Wikipedia can predict the English language, the English language uh, very well, right, then each sentence of the New York Times will have a very high probability in my corpus, right? If I train my data on Twitter and I want to predict uh, the New York Times, well, Twitter, people write differently in Twitter than they actually write in the New York Times. So because those two are very different, a model trained on Twitter will probably understand Twitter. So when evaluated on sentences from the New York Times, the probability of those sentences are going to be it's going to be very low, okay? Because in Twitter you never have these very long sentences as you do in the New York Times, okay? So, or the same words. So, if we have a good model and a test data that is similar to what I trained on, the probabilities of the sentences should be higher for the better model, right? If I have a bigram model and a trigram model and I uh, train on some test, on some training data, and I test that, well, the probability of the trigram model will give higher probabilities to the sentences if the trigram model is better for that data, okay? Now, these probabilities are very small, they're very small numbers, and they can get hard to work on. So, one thing that I can do to make these numbers more workable is apply the logarithm. So if I, apply, if I apply the logarithm to this product here, this is the product of all the probabilities of all the sentences from 1 to m, if I apply the logarithm, then that becomes a sum of logarithms. This is a property of the logarithms. The, lo the, the logarithm of a multiplication is basically the sum of each logarithm of each term of that multiplication. So now we're going to use, the, when I say log here, and every time we use log in this course, we mean base 2. There's a reason for that based on information theory, okay? And it's basically the number of bits necessary to encode something, okay? I might do a video on that later on, but we're going to use logarithm and base 2. So this could be a fine metric to, to measure the performance of our, um, of our uh, 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 language model. However, what people use mostly is perplexity where perplexity is 2 to the negative L, where L is 1 over M times this summation here, this probability. Uh, to give you a few, a few uh, data, on the Wall Street Journal, with a vocabulary size of almost 20,000 words, okay, trained on, on the Wall Street Journal corpus, that's a big chunk of the Wall Street Journal, uh, and then tested on 1.5 million words, or, okay, on a corpus that had 1.5 million words, the Unigram model got a perplexity, denoted by PEP, of 962. A bigram model got a perplexity of 170, and a trigram model got a perplexity of 109. Okay? So, you always want the perplexity to be lower. The perplexity here, when you do this operation here, 2 to the negative L, and because of this log, again, uh, based on information theory, basically what this is measuring is, uh, what this is measuring, this whole equation is measuring, perplexity is measuring how dispersed your data is, okay? 
it's measuring some, it's measuring something called anthrop entropy. Okay, it's a measure it's a metric very re related to entropy. You don't want your corpus to have high entropy. That means that there's it's 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 a it would be very um, it, it could branch to many to many to many things, right? So you have a sentence like in New York and in new computer and in new furniture and in new after new you can have however many words. I mean too many words. It's too dispersed. Your language model is is thinking of English as a as a lang as a as a language that's too dispersed. When you have a better language model, you can predict much more accurately some words. So, for example, after the word um, uh, uh, New York, then the next word might be city, New York City. It can predict, predict that so well that there aren't too many words after New York, okay? Just New York City, New York Police, just a few, not a lot, right? That has lower perplexity. Perplexity is the me metric of how how much you can branch the language given two words, how much branching can there be for the third word. And um, let's let's get this intuition out with, with an example. So let's assume we have vocabulary of n, uh, where n is the vocabulary size plus one, and a model that predicts every possible word that comes after any two words is one over the number of words. So every word coming after two words has equal probability of happening, right? What happens here is that um, it's easy to c compute the perplexity in this case because 2 to the negative L, where L is going to be log of 1 over N. Remember, this probability in my example is 1 over N, and I will have that M times divided by this M, they cancel out, right? So then, uh, because here we're talking about N, N as the totals, this is going to be just log of 1 over n because the outside is going to cancel out. Now, because this log is in base 2, 2 to the negative one, uh, 2 to the negative log of 1 over n will give you a perplexity of n. It is up to you to do these computations, but 2 to the negative logarithm base 2 of 1 over n is going to give you n. This means that there are n words that can come after, on average, for every tri for every bigram there's n number of possibilities that can come after those two words. It's kind of like a branching factor. Now, with exactly this, imagine uh, a, a, a vocabulary where the vocabulary is all the numbers from 0 to 9, okay? And, and we have, uh, um, and we, well, n is the size of the vocabulary, is 10, and we'll say that any number can come after any other two numbers. So, for example, uh, you can have 1, 2, and then the next number could be 3, 0, 5, 9, with equal probability, any number with equal probability. So in this model, any third number given the previous 2 has a probability of 1 over 10. Okay? It's easy to calculate the perplexity. In this case, it's exactly the same thing we did. The perplexity here would be 10, which means each number can be followed by 10 other numbers. That is a language model that can predict, you know, a lot of random numbers. However, in life, for example, we can say that they don't all have the probability of 1 over 10. Because if we look, at, say, for example, at price tags, uh, if there's a 9, it's usually followed by another 9, right? For example, uh, uh, 10,099, 599, those price tags, right? So if the second number, if this guy is 9, this one's more likely to be 9, and then this probability is going to be different, and this branching factor is going to be different. Now, there aren't 10 possibilities. It's a much constrained space. That's what perplexity is measuring, is how much room is your language model allowing the language to behave, okay? We as humans, we have very low perplexity because we accept some variations. Some poets might make some specific variations on words, and we might accept them. But there are some variations we definitely do not accept as valid, in this case, as valid English, right? Perplexity measures how much your model allows the language to, uh, to variate, to branch.